Hello, my name is Mary Louise Heffernan and today I'd like to welcome you to Renville Beach in Connemara. This is a beach I'm intimately familiar with having lived here for 12 years. So I'm going to show you the different seaweeds of the beach. We're going to look at the different stratification on the beach. We're going to look at what seaweeds you find at lower, mid and upper shore level. I'm going to show you the features of each seaweed so you too can identify the seaweeds. We're also going to look then at what seaweeds can be used for medicines, which ones can be used for cooking. Seaweed is eaten throughout the world, particularly in Asia. In Japan, there's a huge history of eating seaweeds, but not really so much in Ireland. In my mother's generation, uh, they would have eaten seaweed more commonly than we do now. Uh, she would have eaten dillisk as a treat on her way home from school. She would have got a bag of it on the market stall. I would like to show you the different seaweeds so that you can incorporate them into your diet and maybe learn how to cook with them. Here we are down at the seashore and you can see the seaweeds are here on the rocks behind me. There are three different types of seaweeds, brown, green and red seaweeds and each occupy their own area on the shore mainly. Normally we find green seaweeds in the upper shore, we find brown seaweeds in the mid to lower shore and red seaweeds they need very little light so they're often found at the, in the lowest uh, zone of the shore. Seaweeds are plants and they've got different parts to their structure just as land plants would have stalks, uh, roots and leaves. Seaweeds have their own parts and their own names for these parts. Seaweeds have a stipe instead of a stalk. They have a holdfast instead of a root. The holdfast holds fast onto the rocks, securing the seaweed in place. Often seaweeds also have things called air bladders, which helps keep the seaweed buoyant and helps to expose it to more light. We are now going to look at lots of seaweeds. We're going to look at their identifying features so that you will be able to find these seaweeds on your own beach. I'd like to tell you about this seaweed. It's called Alaria or Atlantic Wakame and it's one of my favourite seaweeds because it's so tasty. It's a delicious seaweed. Um, you can see the identifiers for this seaweed. Um, it's got a single mid rib all the way down. It's like a big leaf shape um, and you can find it at the lowest point of the tide. You can see we're at very, very low tide um, here and it, it grows, as you can see, attached to the rocks by, um, by a small, a small hole fast. Um, but it's very easy to identify. There's nothing like it on the seashore. Here we are at the lowest point of the tidal cycle. The tide is fully out and it's just beginning to turn back in now. Uh, we're here to see Dillisk. Uh, at, this is the place where it grows best on the seashore. Um, it typically grows on rocks or attached to, to other seaweeds. And you can see it here, it's shiny, it's a red seaweed. Um, and it's got typical formation where you have a central frond with little, little leaflets off the main frond. And that's one of the, the main ways that you can identify Dillisk. A combination of where it's growing and its formation. This, this seaweed also grows in a kind of rosette formation. So it's got a central point uh, which it attaches to the rock or to another seaweed. And each of the leaflets spreads out from that basically in a, yeah, in a kind of a circle. So each of these leaflets then uh, are attached to the center hold. This is the same seaweed that I spoke earlier about my mother eating as a child, that she would eat this dried from market stalls uh, on her way home from school. So we're here to have a look at uh, sugar, sugar kelp. Um, again, this is another low tide species and grows attached to rocks um, in the lower shore area. Um, sugar kelp is um, it's uh, one of one of the uh, the kelps, and you can see that it's uh, very distinctive with um, a very bumpy sort of surface um, and um, a, a, an edge like a Spanish dancer. So this is called sugar kelp because when it dries out, a white powder can be seen on its surface, and that is the sugar mannitol. Um, thus giving it a sweet taste. 
Uh, sugar kelp can be used for a few things. So one of the things that it's used for um, is it can be used to make stock. So you can collect it. It often washes up after a storm. You can use it to make stock. Um, by just rolling it up and putting it in a pot of water overnight or more recently it's been used to make crisps with you can roast it in the oven and you can end up with extremely healthy crisps so I'm here looking at a bed of serrated rack um, the tide is just on its way in and um, the bed is just here growing below me um, serrated rack uh, is uh, one of the brown seaweeds. It can be easily identified by a midrib and it's got a serrated uh, knife-like edge uh, which is so distinctive that it's really unmistakable. Um, at this time of the year um, the uh, serrated rack has got a kind of a yellow hue to it. Earlier in the year it would have been brown but it's at the end of its reproductive cycle now. Um, the uh, fruiting bodies are kind of yellow at, towards the tips. Um, and so it's got a much more kind of yellow tones to it. Um, other seaweeds are very similar. They change, um, they change color during the seasons and are often more yellow in summertime. Serrated rack is uh, the seaweed that you will find in seaweed baths um, and it's the one that's used in co the cosmetics industry. So if you buy face cream with uh, seaweed in it, it'll be serrated rack more than likely will be the, the ingredient. We're here to look at um, carrageen growing on the rocks here. This is a very typical place to find carrageen. Um, it's a, again, it's a low tide species. And it's found actually under, often under other seaweeds. Um, here we're having a look at it under a bed of serrated rack. Um, there's two types of carrageen which are, they're gathered together and they're sold together all under the name carrageen but they are slightly different in character. Uh, one of them is kind of branching. It looks kind of like a flat tree. It's all in the one plane. And the other one is it's very curly with little tiny pips on it. And that's called grape pip weed. They both act in the same way. They've got the same properties. Um, and they're both red seaweeds. Carrageen is one of the few seaweeds that are gathered um, still in the locality in Connemara. Dillisk is still gathered and carrageen will be gathered particularly if somebody's got some sort of a chest complaint or a virus. It's got antiviral properties and um, traditionally it would have been boiled up in water and given to people as a, a drink. It um, basically exudes a gel and so the drink would be quite viscous. An alternative way of preparing carrageen would be to, to cook it in milk and to serve it, it's often sweetened and served as a pudding as well, which to my mind is a much more palatable way of eating it. Here we are mid-shore looking at a weed, a seaweed that's called pom-pom weed or polysiphonia would be another more correct name for it. Um, it's a seaweed that grows attached to other, other seaweeds. Um, often it grows attached to egg rack and in this case it's spiral rack um, it's kind of like you can see it, it looks like fluffy balls basically attached to the host seaweed and it's very kind of fibrous in nature what's really nice about this particular seaweed is its taste it's got a very uh, really stunning taste um, it's one of its names is the truffle of the sea and it can be used as a substitute for truffle in recipes. Here we are looking at pepper dulse. It grows in black clumps on rocks. It's very distinctive in that it grows in the kind of midshore area. Um, the, the fronds are never more than about an inch long maximum looks kind of like feather-like um, in its appearance, black and feather-like. This time of the year in September, that's the way it appears. Pepper dulse looks very different in summer. It looks swollen and yellow in color and it's much shorter in appearance. And it looks very different to the appearance this time of the year where it is flat and black in its uh, texture and shape. So 
the best way to, to tell pepper does any time of the year is because of its very distinctive peppery taste so don't be shy about tasting it because that is one of the key features of its identification pepper does is very good for uh, spicing up salads and it could be put into omelettes to give it a bit of a kick At this time of the year, autumn and during the winter, um, often uh, a lot of seaweed gets um, washed up on the shore. And th this seaweed here, you can see it's, it's basically collecting on the beach. Um, and people locally uh, in Connemara will come to the shore and they'll pick up the seaweed and use it to fertilize maybe a small vegetable plot or whatever. Um, they bring down maybe a tractor and trailer to collect it. Today what I'm doing is I'm having a look at some of the seaweeds that I've just found on the shore to show you um, just the features of a seaweed. So the first thing I'll show you, I'll show you this. This is oarweed. So oarweed, we were talking about the parts of a seaweed. Um, this is, you can see, this is the, uh, it's the stalk or it's called the stipe of a seaweed. Um, and this is a, a laminaria. Um, an oarweed and uh, you can see this is the uh, the leaves or the frond as it's called the frond is what we call seaweeds in this case it's very typical you can see that you have um dillisk is growing here attached to the stipe in this particular case the whole fast is missing from this section the root um but i'll just show you now i have one here with a hold fast so whole fasts come in many different shapes and forms. I'm going to show you examples of a few of them here. This is the hold fast for, this is a sugar, sugar kelp. And um, you can see it's a small hold fast, which grabs onto the rock. And then for the laminaria, you can see it's a much bigger hold fast. There's a, you can see, much di different in shape so that's like equivalent to the roots you can see this is a very different much bigger hole fast for the laminaria species this is probably the one of the most interesting hole fasts is fur bellows you can see it's got a very very interesting shape the hole fast part was missing but you can see it down there look that's the whole fast for fur bellows. So there's huge variation. Some of them are very small, like uh, uh, that you would hardly see at all. They would just be like, you know what I mean? A small, tiny base attached to the rock and other ones are much more elaborate, um, like these ones. So I've decided I'm gonna show you a few different fronds. So you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about fronds. Um, they depends on the seaweed, the shape and the size of the frond. So this is a very small um, example of a frond of sugar kelp. And you can see the bumpy surface and the, the waving edge of it, very distinctive of that species. That's very different sort of frond that you would get from, for example, this is sea lettuce. Pretty featureless, really. Just a sheet um, and that bright kind of iridescent green um, colour very typical of it but you see no features no mid rib no air bubbles no hold fast and um, that, that is obvious on this this particular species um, and that is very similar it's very similar to nori which again is again it's like a sheet and um, different different shade often looking much blacker than this particular uh, sample but it's, this is typical of this time of the year and um, uh, a trans translucent sheet that's the leaf or the frond in that particular seaweed um, so this is a this is another frond then um, you can see that there's a twirl in that spiral rack which is hybridized with um, bladder rack um, and you can see that that it's much more kind of leaf like you can see that there is a mid rib 
Here we have also air bladders to keep it afloat uh, so that um, there's, it brings it up uh, into kind of a light zone and so it gets more sunlight and can photosynthesize more. And then this one is very differ different to this one, which is, looks like kind of grass. It's a uh, gut weed um, and that will be found on the upper shore. But again, very different in structure, the leaf the fronds of this particular plant and the final one then I'll show you is this is dillisk and you can see this again is very typical of dillisk it's got a main frond with lots of leaflets attached this is only a bit of the dillisk plant which normally grow in a rosette so these are all different fronds of seaweed and they'd be the first the first thing you need to to identify what family is it in is it a brown green or red seaweed this for example is a red seaweed and what is its structure like does it have a mid rib does it have air bubbles what's its whole fast like so without further delay let's go further down the shore so here we have a uh, sea lettuce it's easy to see why it's called sea lettuce because it does look quite like lettuce um, it, uh, you can find it in sheets now at this time of the year, maybe it's a little bit, it's gone past as best. You can see it's a bit holy and stuff. Um, so this particular sample wouldn't be great to eat. Um, you'd want something that's kind of more intact really. Um, but it is actually uh, another very nice seaweed. It's uh, again, it's quite a delicious seaweed. And again, it'd be another one that you find in Japanese restaurants in salads. But also um, what I like to do with it is I like to, to, to dry it out in an oven until it goes black cr and crunch it up then and mix it with sesame seeds and then you can use it as a dressing on salad or on fish or whatever um, it often gets washed up um, but you have to be careful that it's in a in a place that's unpolluted and good for, for eating seaweed from um, and it often gets bleached out by the sun you can see this one is slightly bleached at the top so I'm here at the uppermost part of the shore to talk about channel rack um, and channel channel or channeled rack is called as such because it is a little channel um, that runs along the center point of the uh, of the stipe and we'll have a close-up look at that now shortly and um, as you can see it's in clumps um, on the the rocks here it's a very short plant it's, it only would grow to I don't know, maybe three inches in length maximum. Um, I like to think of it as a kind of a beginner's seaweed. It's a simple one to find because it's up high on the shore. Um, it's great because you can access it at really throughout the tidal cycle, unlike some of the other ones like, um, you know, serrated rack or the carrageens would be only accessible on the lowest of tides. So this one is accessible all the time. Um, it's a little brown seaweed and uh, you can see uh, this time of the year now it's got fruiting bodies um, uh, and it has a kind of a yellow appearance at the, the, the end of the stipe um, which gives it a characteristic appearance kind of yellow this time of the year and um, I like it because it's easy to use you can basically boil it for 15 minutes serve it with butter as a vegetable or you can basically take a handful and put it in with your penne pasta and serve it with your bolognese and um, it's very versatile and it's not got a very strong flavor so it's an easy one uh, to start start eating um, I um, I remember bringing a bowl of it uh, uh, into an exhibition with my son and when I turned around it was all gone it was that easy to eat so whenever you're going to the seashore you should be very conscious of health and safety um, you should check the weather to make sure that uh, it's suitable conditions for going down to the seashore. You should be aware that uh, climbing the rocks, it could be slippy. Um, I know that sounds really obvious and it's always good really to have somebody with you as well. Um, most importantly though really are, are the tides, to check the tides. If you want to see all the seaweeds, you'd really want to be on the beach at, a, at an extreme low tide um, to get the full range of seaweeds. Um, and it's really well worth planning your your time properly so that you do that to be careful as well if you don't know the beach to make sure that you walk out with the tide and walk back in with the tide so that you're not caught unawares 
um, that should always be your priority when you're going down to the beach to look at seaweeds. If you do have um, a permission or a license to harvest uh, seaweed, uh, you should always remember that in order uh, to harvest seaweed sustainably, it should be um, cut. Um, and it should be cut at around, a good kind of ballpark is to cut um, uh, maybe a third to two thirds of your, of, of your stipe of your frond and to leave the rest behind so that it continues to grow. Um, some people go and they pull the seaweed off the rocks. Well, it's like parsley in your garden. You wouldn't pull your parsley up, you'd cut it. So don't forget to, to bring a scissors and to cut what you need and to plan ahead. If you are planning to make a meal, just to cut what you need and not to, to, to cut more than, than you require for your meal. Seaweeds keep very well, so you can dry seaweeds, you could dry it in a low oven um, overnight um, and once it's dry it'll store for it'll store for maybe six months, maybe a year. Uh, you can also freeze some fresh seaweeds can be frozen. Uh, if you're near a beach, of course you can use them fresh like uh, I tend to do. Um, also to be careful where you're collecting from. Is it a beach used by dog walkers? Um, uh, is there a lot of housing around? Is the beach unpolluted? Um, just to make sure that before harvesting that you know that your beach has no pollution on it. Always uh, harvest seaweed as the tide uncovers it and that will be the safest way to harvest the seaweed on your unpolluted beach. So seaweeds are very first time forager friendly because uh, um, in, certainly in the UK and Ireland, there aren't any poisonous seaweeds. Um, there's a one deep sea species which you should avoid, but you'd never find that on a, on a shoreline anyway. So they're all safe to eat. And you can basically, once you're on a clean beach, you can just taste the seaweeds as you go and find out which ones are your favorites.